Welcome back to another episode of Black Caution. I am Joshua Washington, and as always, I want to invite you all to participate in this real conversation that the fellas are having, all right? So with no further ado, let's get into it. Black Caution. All right, welcome back. For those of you who have been following along thus far, you know we are having an extended conversation. I got the fellas in the house today doing some real talk, real men, black caution. And on this episode, this segment, I wanted to get into something that's probably a little bit more serious than what we've been talking about. And I want to start off our conversation by reading a statistic to you all regarding mental health for black men. Check this out. I read this and it blew my mind. It says, African-American men are four times more likely, four times more likely to die by suicide than African-American women. Actually, suicide is the third leading cause of death among African-Americans aging 15 to 24. When you all hear that, what's your immediate reaction? I can, I can agree to it. Um, I went through a time period in my life where I lost my mom, my dad, <clears throat> and my grandma in a total of a seven year span. Wow. And, and in that seven year span, I, I, I became so numb to the feeling of death that I, I got to a point where I was like, why am I still here? And I knew from experiencing that, it was just, it was just like, like why? why, why keep going on? Like, I, it, thoughts of suicide went through my head. Like, mm. on a serious note, it went through my head because it's just like, I lost my whole upper echelon of family, and it's just us. It's just me and my brothers here. Wait, recap that again? You, who, you lost who? My mom, my dad, and my grandma in a <laughs> seven-year span. The pillars. Dang. I lost everything. That's crazy, bro. I lost it all. And the only thing that, that kept me going at the end of the day was, if I do this, if I do leave this earth, I'm gonna be a coward. Huh. I didn't want my kids to see me go out in that kind of manner. That was the only thing that, that kept me grounded was that I had kids. If I, if I didn't have my kids, I don't think I would have kept pushing. Wow. Wow, bro, that's crazy. I think with us and men, those uh, stresses that we don't recognize, we compartmentalize certain things and try to put them in different compartments and cover them up, and there's so much of a buildup to that, we explode. And that explosion leads to suicide. It leads to taking drugs. It leads to harming someone else, that the, or even harming ourselves. So for the most part, <clears throat> I can't even say I, I'm environment for speaking from my own experience. I've dealt with some things that, you know, kind of, you know, mess with me a lot. Yeah. And that was pretty much taking on the burdens, my mom's burdens. Like us as young men always want to make sure mom was good, right? But we never really take care, try to take care of ourselves because you got that one kid that's 15, 16 years old in high school. His first thing is, I need to be an athlete. I need to buy my mom a house. Never mentioned that he need to buy himself a house. Yeah. He said, I need to buy my mom a house. So taking on those added stresses also, um, you know, contribute to those, sometimes those thoughts and not only that, us having some type of mental lapse because we don't have that mental capacity to be strong or to verbalize that we're hurting, uh, that we need help, yeah. or be vulnerable to another man or anybody else because it's so sacred that we don't want to feel soft or just, you know, just not a man or not a young man. Well, you mentioned something there, bro, <clears throat> which made me think, do y'all feel like we take on or we're given too much responsibility too early as black men? Absolutely. Yes. Without a shadow of doubt. 
Yeah. Yes. Without a shadow of doubt, because I think as soon as you're you're able to, you know, kind of get out into the real world, or I don't want to say get out into the real world, but you was always this thing was put upon you of you got to be strong, you got to provide, you can't be weak. Like there's so much that's given to you, and you're just like, well, what what's what's going on? Like this is crazy, but you can't show weakness yeah. in this in this time that you're giving all this stuff, and it's like how do how do I even balance this stuff like where do I even go like and then you don't have a, 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 a another man in your life or, or an example of how you you know go through life you don't have that so it's now it's just like you're trying to figure this out on the run with all these responsibilities of you know you gotta you're eight years old taking care of your little brother because your mom's at work yeah so now you're ahead of a household at eight years old yeah you got to make sure your little brother eats you got to le- learn how to cook and all at eight like you're, you don't yeah. even have a childhood yeah. because you're thrown into manhood, mm-hmm. and it's crazy because it's just like that's how we grew up, and now we get to this point to where it's like I don't even know how to express myself. Yeah, I don't even know how to talk to other men. I don't even I don't know how to be intimate with people. Yeah, because I'm so closed off and and always in the mindset of okay I gotta gotta be strong I gotta provide I can't show weakness I just gotta do it this way, and then it just creates this monster inside of you. And when you get to that point, that monster releases, and then it's, it's havoc. Not only to you, but the person that you fall in love with, with your significant other. Yeah. Like, they are, they're going to benefit, they're, they're going to reap the stuff that, that's been sold in you for, for your entire life. So it's just a, it's a totally different animal, man, for real. And Ramsey, knowing you growing up, I mean, that's, like, that's, that's part of your story, bro. Yeah. You're having a lot of responsibility at an early age. Tell, tell us a little bit about that. You know, I'm sitting here, and I'm thinking, I'm like, dang, you know, when you get out of the environment and you're actually introduced to this word mental health and you look back and you're like, man, if it wasn't for constantly working, I think suicide would probably been the first thing that I probably would have went to because, you know, starting off growing up young, my father leaving uh, when I was three and he's in and out and then I started work at an early age. Josh knows. I mean, you know, from working with Dixie, paying rent, um, and this is all at the age of 15, taking care of my brother commissary while he's in prison. But Popeyes was a major right? come up, though. And Popeyes they, made me come they, up. They I kept mean, everybody fed. Yeah. Him working at Popeyes. Yeah. <laughs> but it, 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 was, it was crazy because you would think up. in high school with me working that many hours and still part of activities that I would have money to save. But all my money was going to family members. So here I am at a young age, you know, handling responsibility like car insurance, light bill, helping mama with this, helping my brothers in college if they needed some money to help pay for their food. Or So for me, I'm looking at mental health now. I'm like, dang, you know, d- growing up during that time, was I really dealing with mental health or was it just a, 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 a thing that I just grew up That's crazy, doing bro. and knowing? That's crazy because it sounds like it doesn't even sound like you're describing a childhood. Because you, when we think about jobs, it's like young young boys. It's for responsibility, the learned responsibility. But from what what I'm hearing, we all it was all about providing. Like, yeah. Yo, it's provision. Like you you were taking Those on birds. the yeah. man the the man uh, responsibility and role in the house. At how old were you when you started working all those jobs? Uh, I started when fifteen. Fifteen. I mean fifteen. You said like eight years old, and those are ages where it's good to have a job. Yeah. But it's like. You shouldn't have the pressures and responsibility yeah. having to yeah. pay the light bill to have yeah. your job. But it, it, it's, it's now today I see how important it is as far as therapy, right? It's funny because I was just talking to someone about, you know, having them seek therapy. Because in our black community, when we hear therapy, we think about, once again, you going crazy or you being weak. But what if therapy shows you the trigger points to where your trauma is? Mm. Because we don't know what, tr- we, don't even un- we don't even understand the word trauma. No. Where does that come from? What is the characteristic that identifies that you are dealing with a childhood trauma? That's why they say even in marriage, when a woman marries the man, you better pray she's not marrying her father mm. because she needed the father figure and not the man that she sees. You see what I'm saying? Because trauma can make us make emotional decisions that intellectually we can't even sustain what we have because we're trying to fulfill the trauma that we've been that we've been going through. So therapy is something that in the black community we don't really we don't really talk about. A couple of weeks ago I was looking for a black mental health counselor. A male can't find one. Mm. All women 
can't find one. And and not to say this, I, I, there's no facts on this, but based off what I've seen it and people I've, I've spoken to who's in that field, a lot of them got into the field because of their traumas. Yeah. So now they're like, I need to help women who've been raped, who've been molested. But what about the men? There's no black men who are actually in the field of mental health that I can find wow, yeah. to be like, man, who can I talk to wow. who is wow. in that field to help me get out of that space that I'm in? Wow. T, you mentioned a lot about this and a lot of our rundown stuff, bro. You were talking about some of this, a lot of the mental stuff and social, economic stuff. Expand on some of the stuff you were telling us about, just some of the mental health discrepancies in the community. Well, our social economic status, it brings a lot of stressors too as well. Um, economically, we're not able to afford those resources that we have. Mm. But at the same time, we don't have the ones that's left us be able to come back and embrace us and actually, you know, give us the help that we need or provide those services. Um, the way I grew up, I, I'd rather not grow up without my dad. I'll keep it exactly the way it is. And the reason being because I don't want his bad habits being washed up on me. Mm. Because obviously he had some, you know, he was a rolling stone and he did what he did. And I don't want to be that person. So yeah. I always tell myself every day that when I do decide to have children, I'm going to be the best dad in the world. That's good. You mentioned something about health insurance. I'm looking at the statistic here. It says African Americans, specifically men too, are less likely to have health insurance. Yes. And, and we've seen that in the hood. I mean, at the time we, we yeah. used to just say, just don't get hurt, bro. <laughs> I, I, think, I, think we, I, I think we grew up as we're the Hulk. Yeah. Can't nothing touch us. I'm all the way up. Well, you know? And not just that, though, but it, like, like he said, the socioeconomic, that's not something we grew up being used to having. Yeah. Like, you go to the doctor when something's wrong. Like, like yeah, yeah. I, it wasn't until I like became an adult that I realized. You got a limb falling off. That's when yeah, you're going to the doctor. Right. It wasn't until I got older that I realized, you know, you're supposed to have, like, an annual checkup. Like, they're supposed to uh, check, and you know, check the engine, you know, check everything. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to be honest with you. The only time I got physicals was because I played sports. Yep. And if I didn't play sports, I wouldn't have got a physical. Yep. Yeah. I'm just going to keep it 100 with you. And if and if we we're getting the physical, yeah. it is. He won the cough, <laughs> <laughs> bro. Why, why you always got to go there, bro? I had to throw it in there always, bro. I'm not trying to bring back. You talking about trauma? Ain't nobody trying to bring back that's 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 trauma. That's trauma. Yeah. My goodness, bro. We ain't trauma trauma. coughing at the doctor. Do, do, we, do we have a therapy session right now? Yeah, he need on. one. <laughs> but I also think we never went to the hospital because we had some home remedies. Yeah, uh, ginger ale. G oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> tell, tell me more, please. That's, that's ginger ale is a cure for everything. If you got a stomachache, drink ginger ale. You know what? what? Your head hurt? Go drink some ginger ale. Let me, oh, let, me guess. Pack. let me guess. That came from grandma. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> In the Haitian culture, we had tea. We had some tea and some herbs that healed you, like, and it tastes nasty, but you get whooping <laughs> for it. But it made you better. So mentioning remedies, and this might be. Uh, a little bit of a, a heavy transition, but I had to bring this up because I saw this recently. There was a young man, I want to make sure I get his name right. Uh, I saw this on the news. His name was Cameron Burrell, and major track star. So he had the sports thing going on. You know, his dad was a major track star. He broke his dad's records, just like things you see, bro. Just, just, you, just you see that there was a lot of a trajectory to success was there, man. And recently, I read on, on an article that the guy ended up shooting himself in the head in a um, in a parking garage. The and it son seemed, or the dad? Then the son, the son, the, the son ended up shooting himself in the head in the garage. And I, I would have to think that was totally just unforeseen because his, his parents put out a um, a letter and they were talking about how just just devastating. They didn't see it coming. And so my question to you all is really around what's your reaction when you hear a story like that? How how common is that that you do you think and how do we end that that suffering in silence hmm. i would i i would start off and say there, there's a couple things i want to talk about with that he was exhausted from the pressure his platform came with a requirement that he wasn't graced to carry maybe because with every gift that you've been given that god has given you the grace he's placed on that gift can handle the level of burden of the platform that you're going to deal with Right. And some people grow so early that mentally they're not prepared for what comes with it. Mm. It's just like a lot of NBA players. You got some who come out of college, who comes out of high school, go to the NBA, get a million dollars and they expect them to be a leader. How do you expect that? Because of the platform, the platform comes with a requirement. And the other thing I would say is 
you know, it's that one thing about that self-accomplishment. He probably felt like where he was trying to go, to us, it looked successful. To him, it looked like it was failure. Because what was, because what was, because how he grew up. We don't know those conversations that him and his father had. Because remember, you're talking about building a legacy behind the legend and his family. So it goes back to that first thing I talked about, him being exhausted with that pressure. That pressure was so heavy now that he couldn't just carry it anymore and he had no one to talk to because everybody saw him great. And again, we're not putting any right. aspersions on these situations. We're just speaking to him as if, from our perspective, as black men. Because I can only imagine being that young, yeah. having, having all that going on, man, and to get so such to a, a point, bro, where, and in a, in a, I just keep picturing that parking garage, bro, how lonely that must have felt, you know, how, how broken that must have felt. And I just wanted to give you, you men an opportunity here as we close this segment to whoever's watching on there who might be dealing with what um, that young Cameron was dealing with to kind of sp speak some life into where they're at because you all have experienced either similar or been in that space. So I, I'll start with, uh, with, with T. What would you say to somebody that's watching this? Um, I would like to say that it's okay to make yourself vulnerable and speak up for yourself. Um, don't compartmentalize those feelings or issues you may have. Uh, try to seek confidence in somebody other than it could probably be a teacher or, you know, a guidance counselor at the school because I'm pretty sure they'll be more confrontational. I mean, um, not confrontational, but more... Um, support. Yeah, so more support and so more... And they won't... They won't put all your business out like that. Oh, confidential. Or won't put that kind of pressure on yeah, you. Yeah, confidential. Yeah, confidential. Yes, that's the word I'm looking for. Thank you. Be confidential and won't put that amount of pressure on you that you need to do or lead up to a legacy, like he said, that was um, coming before you. Yeah, yeah. Rambo, what would you say? I would say um, secrets are your demons. And you need to find that safe place. If you don't know what a safe place is, you're finding someone who you can find comfort in that they're actually hearing and listening to you and they're giving you some information that will help you to be a better version of yourself. Because if you made it in out of all of them, then of course God has a purpose for your life, right? You may not see the purpose yet, but the more you die to those things that tell you that you're not capable of doing it and you actually embrace those words of positivity into your life, you'll start to see why you were created for the culture or the season that you're in now. So find that safe place. Don't allow your secrets to, your secret to demonize you to the point that you don't see the freedom that you've been born with. So take that into consideration. Find that safe place and be inspired by it. Ron, you get the last word. Uh, hey, say the best for last. <laughs> I think, um, I, I've been hearing this lately, check on your strong friends. No matter mm. how, they're, they, how, how they yeah. appear on the outside, make sure you are communicating with people who, who seem like they got it all together. Because th there comes a time in a place to where they don't have it all together. And you just being a, a voice of reasoning and just checking on them, hey, I love you, hey, uh, I wish you the best, could, could literally deter them from pulling that trigger. So always be that, that voice of, of, of reasoning to, to strong people because I would say everybody else, everybody's up here who's pretty strong, but we all have our vulnerable moments. And I think it's, it's, it's so great that we can come to one another and be like, hey, bro, you good, I love you. Hey, hey you, you good today? You need anything? But just that type of atmosphere will stop somebody from pulling the trigger because I can honestly say that day T found me in my closet and I'm boohoo crying. He, was t he just told me to get up. That's all I needed to hear. Hmm. When he found me in my closet, I'm boohoo crying. He just said, bro, get up. And that, that literally changed my life. Wow, bro. And you might be watching this, though. And you may think, you know, we've had a lot of fun up here. But to, to Ron's point, I think there have been many seasons in my life where I was that strong friend. And I was the, the one that people wouldn't even know. I was like camera. People wouldn't even know that I was struggling and suffering in silence. And, and it's, I find myself sitting on the couch just like that, man, writing a letter to my parents because I didn't think it was, I didn't think life was worth living. And there's so many young black men and just men in general who are having the same experience, going through the same issues and suffering in silence. So if you get nothing else from this episode, here's what I want you to know. There's always help. There's always a way out. There's always a T telling 
or there to tell you, hey, man, get up and keep going. There's always someone in that circumference of your uh, life. But you, you have to be willing to do the hard thing, to, to do the, the vulnerable thing and say, hey, I need help. Here's where I'm at. It's, it's not a weakness. It's actually a strength to look at someone else and say, hey, can you help me in this season of my life? So if you're out there, I just want you to know there's help available. There's resources available. And we want to make sure if you're, having that, if you're in that space in your life and you need help, we want to make sure you get it. All right. So, fellas, I appreciate you all being vulnerable, man, and, and honest. And this, this is not an easy topic, but I really appreciate y'all giving me some honesty. All right. Make sure you don't miss the next episode. Uh, we're going to keep this thing going with real talk, real men, black caution. Hey, listen, thank you so much for watching. Before you leave, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss an episode. We want you to participate in this real conversation, all right? So we'll see you next time. Black Caution. <laughs>